How's it going everybody? Welcome to this week's video. Well, this week we're going to be working on the Suburban. We've got to get this thing back up and running again. So, first thing we're going to do is put a battery charger on it. If I can get the dang door unlocked. Okay, there it goes. Because I know the battery is maybe a little bit low. It's been sitting for a little bit. So, let's get that going. Plus, oh, monster is. Plus, I need to check that compressor, and it's just going to be easier with a full battery and running on the battery charger. So that way I don't kill the battery because it's going to be running for a little bit while I try to diagnose the issue. All right, let's get this plugged in. Well, it ain't but so low. It's like at 75%. So, that's a good thing. All right, now I need to run to the auto parts store and pick up brake fluid. And we're going to hope and see if they have um, a shock for this. If not, Advanced Auto usually has it next day. So, we're going to head there, see what we can get. Back in a second. All right, I'm back. Got brake fluid, and of course, they didn't have the shock in stock, so not a big deal. It'll be there tomorrow. So by the time I get off work, I can swing by the store and pick up my shock, and then we can get this back on, and should be good to go. So let's first, while we're waiting on the shock, we have a couple things we gotta address. One thing is the one compressor isn't working, so I'm hoping that there's an electrical issue. A wire got broke or something, who knows? So we're gonna address that first. Then second, we're going to uh, put the brake fluid in and try to bleed the brakes on this and see if we can find a leak or whatever. So that's gonna be second. Then third will be tomorrow, which will be getting the shock back on. So let's go ahead and address the, sh the electrical issue first. Got my multimeter and we're gonna turn the compressor on and then we'll test to see if it's getting electricity here and then we'll try to trace it because it compressors on this side, it's grounded here. The power wire goes over to the driver's side and splices into the other wire. That compressor's working. So basically, it's got to be something in between that compressor and this compressor. So, we'll figure it out. Alright, let's go ahead and fire up the compressor. Ugh, turn this bitch on. Alright. side and see if there's power on the transfer
Okay, so I know it's a rat's nest. We're going to get it cleaned up. So right inside there where the main wire comes in here and it goes to the compressor there, this one loops and goes to the other side. So somewhere in there, it's done broke because there's power coming in power going out but not power going out to the other side so let's go ahead and unwrap this and it's probably messed up in there all right so here's the power wire coming back and there's the one going to the other compressor it done broke off so I guess we need to go ahead and clean these all up and get these put back together I mean road grime what I need to do is get them cleaned up and wrapped up a lot better keep the moisture out because this thing does get used well or it did get used I mean it got rain and rain sleet snow if I needed to use it to drive it I took it out so what we're gonna do is get the wires all cut back get new fresh stuff get it wire tied up good get it wrapped up electrical tape good and then try to basically seal it up better out of the elements so let's go ahead cut the wires back and hopefully get that compressor running again we're gonna after we cut the wires back we're gonna test it to make sure that, that compressor works first and it's not locked up all right again this is power in this is to the compressor on the driver's side that one works fine and this is the compressor to the passenger side perfect so now i need to i'm going to cut this one back a little more because it still needs to get cleaned it's a little corroded still so we're going to go ahead and cut this back get them all wired together and then both compressors will be working again heck yeah that saves me a lot of money okay let's go ahead and turn the air compressors back on and there's that one running and that one running so both of them are running now and that's perfect that's a good thing because a new compressor for a buyer 444 is roughly about $200 so that just saved me $200 on a wiring issue all right now let's get on to the brakes first we're going to pull the brake drums off and see if they're how much air is that in it we'll just shut this off for now so let's pull the brake drum and see if there's any well they are dirty all right, what we're looking for is, you know, like major leaks. I mean, they're dirty. A ton of brake left. But I don't, I mean, you can see it is kind of filthy, but it isn't like looking like it's leaking. Because if it was leaking, it would have brake fluid all in the drum. All right, this is the passenger side. So let's go ahead and put this back on and we're going to go over and yank the driver's side off real quick. Alright, now let's go to the other side. I'm hoping that this ain't got no leak. I'm hoping that just, it was something wrong. This one's even better. I mean, this is like completely dry. There's like nothing, just brake dust. All right, let's put that back on. So, I think 
On the passenger side, the little wheel cylinder is leaking, but it's not like leaking really bad. So what we're gonna do for right now is we're gonna go ahead, top it off, we're gonna bleed the brakes and see if, once there's brake fluid in it, then I'll see if it leaks because it's been dry for a while. So I mean, a lot of that could have dried up and this and that. So let's go ahead, top it off, bleed the brakes, go from there. Luckily I have a brake, bleed, brake fluid bleeder kit somewhere in here. All right, let's pop this off. What the hell? Okay, now that's really weird. Um, why is the reservoir full? Last video I did on this and showed that this reservoir had about that much fluid and that reservoir was empty. Hmm. Okay, I have no idea. Maybe this was a little bit fuller and somewhere on the drive here it sloshed back. I mean, because it does have this rubber top so it should be able to transfer. But still, I don't know. All right, well, let's go ahead and, I don't know. Let's just go ahead and start bleeding the brakes and go from there, see what the heck we can find out. Well, it's the next day and I screwed up. So first thing I screwed up was I didn't video bleeding the brakes. Second thing I screwed up is when I went to Get my shock there's the other back shock and there was the new one well i ordered a front shock instead of a back shock oh, so needless to say i gotta return that one and go get a correct one hey accidents happen but the bad thing is is i'm not gonna have it in time to basically kind of finish this video so I'm going to post this video up short and we are going to continue it probably in about two days. So instead of waiting till next Saturday to post a video, we're going to go ahead and post a video up like either probably Monday. So I'll have a video up Saturday, which is this one. Then I'll have another video up Monday, which will be wrapping up the Suburban. Like, subscribe, comment, catch you in the next video.